Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem online stock span. We're given a list of daily stock prices and we want to return the span of each of these stock prices. Now, the span of a stock price is defined as being the maximum number of consecutive days starting from today and going backwards so the maximum consecutive days where the price, the stock price was less than or equal to the price of today's uh, stock price. So let's take a look at an example. So suppose that this is the list of stock prices that were given and they're given sequentially, right? So this is day one, this is day two, this is day three, et cetera, et cetera. So what would be the span of the first day? Well, obviously there's no uh, stock prices that came before it technically. So this is gonna have a default value of one because the day itself is included. Okay, but then we get to the next day. So what's gonna be the stock span of day two? Well, remember, what's the definition of the span? The maximum number of consecutive days starting from today, right, starting from here, where the stock price is less than or equal to 80 in this case, right? So obviously there's one day, the day this day itself, so it's at least gonna be one. Now, what about the day before? Is the stock price uh, less than or equal to 80 uh, on the day before? Well, it's 100, so it's not less than or equal. So in this case, uh, Again, we're gonna have a value of one. Same uh, goes for this value too, uh, because the day before is more expensive. So it, uh, we don't have any consecutive days. So you can see that when we build our output uh, down here, the first three values are gonna be one. But when we get to day four, 70, uh, we look at the day before 70, 60. So technically the price was less than 70, so that's at least two consecutive days. What about the day before 60? 80, Do we? is it possible that we have three consecutive days? Nope, because 80 is more expensive than 70. So in this case, we have two. And at this point, you probably get the idea for 60, it'll be one again because the day before is more expensive. Even though we have a day over here, which is uh, equal to 60, uh, we need consecutive days, right? So we have to look at the day before and it's more expensive. Uh, but 75 is a little bit more interesting because the day before is 60 is cheaper. The day before that is 70, which is also cheaper than 75. The day before that is 60, which is also cheaper than 75. The day before that is 80, which is not cheaper than 75. So in this case, we had four days. So the spot, uh, span of 75 is gonna be four and 85 is also more interesting because this day, this day, this day, this day, and this day are all uh, cheaper than or equal to 85, uh, but the 100 is where it's gonna stop. So uh, we had six days. So that's how we build this output. Now, the way I kind of just walked through the algorithm, what was the time complexity of the way we just did it? Because we did it in a brute force way, right? For every value, we're just gonna start reading backwards from that value and see how many consecutive days we have where the values are less than or equal to the current day, right? And if we do that for every single value in this array, uh, how long is it gonna to take to look backwards? In the worst case, it would be O of N, where N is the size of the input array. And we're gonna to have to do that for every value, there's N values. So the time complexity is gonna be N times N, which is N squared. Well, there's one shortcut that we can kind of take and we can use that shortcut to actually arrive at a linear time solution. But I do want to warn you that this linear time solution uses a technique that you probably won't be able to come up with unless you've seen it at least one time before. So don't you know feel too bad if you couldn't come up uh, with this by yourself. But first, let's see the little trick that we can do because it's actually pretty simple. So suppose we had this same exact input, right? And suppose that we computed the span for all of these and we're at the last value, right? So basically we've computed all of these. We have the span, right? For 75, the span was four, but now we're trying to compute the last one. Suppose we don't know that it's six just yet. How could we figure it out? Well, can't we use some of the work that we already did uh, to help us? Because take a look. 85, right? We want to know what's the span of it. So of course, we're going to look to the left. There's a 75 here, right? First of all, 75 is less than or equal to 85, right? So therefore, uh, we're going to continue looking backwards, right? That much is obvious. Uh, but what if it was the opposite case? If it was, suppose, 90 or anything that's greater than 85, at that point, we would immediately stop, right? But since this is less than or equal to 85, 
we continue. Starting from 75, we have to look to the left of it to find uh, more consecutive values that could also be less than or equal to 85. But isn't there a little bit of a shortcut that we can take? Because we already computed the span for 75. Now, obviously the span of 75 is going to be a little bit different because from here, we're going to be looking to the left for values that are less than or equal to 75. But what we really want to do is do that for values that are less than or equal equal to 85. So it's not optimal, but we can still use some of the repeated work because for 75, we know that the span of it is four. And naturally, all values that are less than or equal to 75 are also going to be less than or equal to 85. So what we're saying here is we, from, from 75, we don't have to look individually at this value or this value or this value uh, to check that it's less than or equal to 85 because we already know from this four value over here that, you know, all four of these are, are less than or equal to 75. So of course they're less than or equal to 85. So what we're saying is from here, from here we can make a jump now all the way here. And now we're gonna ask ourselves is 80 less than or equal to 85. Because while this 75 was a shortcut, it's not the whole story because these values were only compared to check that they were less than or equal to 75. There could be additional values that are less than or equal to 85. So that's what we have to do extra work on. We can't reuse the repeated work that we did before. So here again, we're gonna have to look at 85. Is it, we're gonna have to look at 80. Is it less than or equal to 85? Yes, it is. So that's another value. Now, in this case, we would again see, is there any repeated work? Uh, basically, we're going to check what's the span of 80. It's one. So that, you know, we can't just take another big jump like we did before. So we again have to look at the particular value. 100 is not less than or equal to 85. Okay, so that was enough for us to complete uh, the span of 85, which now we have determined to be six. But, you know, from this solution, while it's a little bit more optimal because we're not... Uh, required to look at each individual element, sometimes we can just make a big jump. Now that's nice, but still this solution in the worst case is going to be n squared, isn't it? Well, actually, no, not if you implement it optimally. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose now uh, our array actually had one more value in it. Suppose that value was 90, and now we want to know what's the span of 90. Well, now we would look at the previous value, 85 is less than 90. So what's the span of 85? It's six. So we can make a big jump of six. These values are included uh, in, are less than or equal to 90. So then all we have to do is look at 100, right? So that's good. But you're probably thinking, well, we're not always gonna be able to make that big jump, right? What if we had a smaller value like 75, right? Well, in this case, you know, we're gonna have to look at 85 and maybe sometimes we're gonna have to look at these values in between. But my argument is we're never going to ever have to look at any of these values ever again because we know that 85 is greater than or equal to all of these values. So what's either going to happen is we're going to have a value. The next value over here is going to be less than 85 where we would look at this value and say it's greater than 75. So we're never going to be able to make past this value to even look at these ever again. But if we did find a value that was greater than or 80, uh, it was greater than or equal to 85 up next, right? If it was 85 or 90 or something like that, then we would say, okay, this value automatically gives us all of these. It's either or. There's only two cases here. Either we have a value that lets us skip all of these, or we have a value that doesn't let us skip any of these because we have to make it past this guy first before we can even look at these. And this leads us to a solution that's called a monotonic uh, stack solution. In this case, the stack will be monotonic uh, decreasing order. Sometimes they're in increasing order, but let me show you what I mean. And let me show you why it's going to be a big O of n time. Because each value here is only going to be added to our stack or removed from our stack uh, one time each. So if each value is added and removed, then obviously the time complexity is going to be two times n, which is still linear time. Let me just walk through that solution and then we're going to code it up. 
So technically we're gonna have two stacks or you could have a stack of pairs. That's what I'm gonna do in Python at least. But so one portion of the stack is gonna be the price. And for each price, of course, uh, it will have a corresponding span. So first we're gonna look at the first value, 100, right? There's no values to the left of it. So by default, it's gonna be added to the stack and its span is going to be one. Next value is gonna be 80. Now, before we add 80 to our stack, we want to know the previous value. Is it less than or equal to 80? In this case, it's not. So we just take 80, add it back to the stack, and then uh, give it a span of 1 by default. Again, do the same thing for 60 because 80 is greater than 60. So uh, the span of 60, again, has to be 1. Uh, then we look at 70, though. The previous value in this case, 60, is less than or equal to 70. So what are we going to do? In this case, we're going to pop this value from our stack and then increase the span of 70 by 1. Now we're going to look at the next value, 80. Is it also less than or equal to 70? It's not, so we can't keep popping from our stack. Now we're going to take 70 and add it. So 70 is added to our stack with a span of 2 in this case. This 2 basically represents these two values, and we never have to look at this value ever again. We can pretend like it never existed because we already recorded the information we wanted. This stock has a span of 2. Either the next value is going to be greater than or equal to 70, in which case this part will also be included to the span, or it's going to be less than 70, suppose. In this case, we actually do have a 60 value. So what that means is if we can't make it over this value, it doesn't matter what this value is anyway. It doesn't matter it was deleted because we can't even make it over this guy anyway. So 60 is added to the stack, and we are going to give it a span of 1 because it's less than 70. I'm running out of room, so let me add a couple more spots. Sorry about that. I don't like the contrast between the white and the black, but that's okay. Okay, so the next value is 75. So we're going to look at the previous value. It's less than uh, 75, so we can pop this and increase the span of 75 by 1. So for now, I'm going to put a 2 here. Now, again, over here, this value is also less than 75. So we pop this value as well, but instead of increasing the span over here by 1, we're going to increase it by 2 because there's a 2 over here. This 2 represents both of these values. So we pop this and uh, actually our span over here is now going to be 4, but we're going to look at this value. It's greater than 75, though, so we can't pop it. So the final uh, span over here is going to be 4. And then last value, 85. Before we add it, we're going to compare it to the previous value, 75, which is less than 85. So we're going to add 4 to the span of 85. And of course, that 4 represents these four values. And then we're going to look. So by doing that, we're going to pop this, right? Add 4 here. So 4 plus 1 so far. And we're going to look at the previous value again, 80. Uh, we're going to pop that as well. So, so far, the span here is going to be 6. And then we're going to look at the previous value before that as well. But it's greater than 85, so we can't keep adding to the span. So the final answer here is going to be uh, 85. Uh, and then the span here is going to be 6. So as you can see, each element was definitely added to the stack at least once and at most popped once. And I didn't talk too much about what this problem actually wants us to do. Basically, uh, the way this uh, solution is going to work is we're going to be given a stream of values. Basically, each time we're going to be given a new stock price. And then for that stock price, we just want to immediately return the span of it. But internally, we're going to be using a stack to implement that solution efficiently. So now let's jump into the code. By the way, time complexity is big O of n. Also, the memory complexity is big O of n because of the stack data structure that we're using. Okay, so now let's write the code. And in our constructor, we're actually just going to initialize our stack data structure. It's going to be a list of pairs in this case, but you could have two lists if you're, or two stacks if you want to uh, do this in Java, I think, if you can't like easily have pairs of values. So each pair is going to represent uh, the price and the span. We're given a price, right? Every time this next function is called, we're going to be given a price. We want to return the span of that. And to do it efficiently, we're using a stack. So by default, the span of any stock is going to be one, but we want to see maybe we can make it bigger. Well, we can only do that if our stack is non-empty, uh, self.stack, and if the 
price at the on the top of the stack is a uh, less than so to get the top of the stack we're going to do negative one in python that just gives us the last value in the stack you could also take the length minus one and of our pair we want not the span of it but we want the price of it so we can get that by taking index zero so if the price of the top of our stack is less than or equal to the current price uh, then what are we going to do we're going to take our current span, add to it self.stack, the top of the stack, and the span this time. So we're going to take index one because the second value is the span, and we're going to add that to our current span. After that, we're going to pop from the stack. So let's do just that self.stack.pop. And we're going to keep doing that until our stack is empty or the price of the top of the stack is no longer less than or equal to the price. Now, after all of that is done, we want to, of course, update 